Hey, good evening, church. It's uh, your pastor, uh, Mike, uh, Sunday afternoon, July the 19th, and uh, I hope you're having a great Sunday. Uh, in case you haven't gotten out today, it's probably a good thing. It's hot, and uh, summertime is in full swing, but uh, if you have uh, been getting out, I hope you're taking care of yourself. Um, let me share a couple things with you for tonight's message. Uh, a couple things uh, in retrospect going back then uh, kind of an announcement, and then uh, some teaser information for you for uh, the days ahead. I just want to uh, say to you again something about where we are um, as uh, a culture, as a society, and where we are. Um, this past Wednesday, you may have heard me say to you that uh, uh, Wednesday was a struggle of a day for me, and, and we all have them, okay? Uh, some days you pray, like I said Thursday night in my message, from a position of defeat, and you realize we're already victorious in Christ. And so uh, praying from uh, a position of, of victory really is where I think God wants us to be, knowing that in him we are victorious, knowing that we should be praying with expectation for all that he's going to be doing. Uh, but I just put that out there before you again, because I know we just constantly need to be praying for one another. There's, uh, it's just, a, it seems like a constant beat of the drum of negativity, uh, of anger, uh, of angst that's created in people, uh, including myself, okay? And I, I tried to share that some Thursday evening. But the reason I share that with you, too, is um, from a pastor's point of view, um, two pastors, two other pastors, and I've talked uh, over the past uh, few days again, too, and one I'm probably going to have uh, more conversations with this next week because uh, we're just struggling. He's struggling over strategies, of uh, what to do, how to do it. Uh, I continue to try to think through what uh, I want to get us to. Uh, it's just not always that clear, especially when the rules seem to change from week to week and month to month with uh, how everybody wants our culture to navigate uh, COVID-19. Uh, another pastor, uh, he and I talked this afternoon, uh, and he just wanted to know how it was going. He wanted to know what the, some pointers were and some lessons learned because he had multiple leadership meetings um, in different levels of his church, and he continues to scratch his head uh, on this as well. And so I put all that out there just uh, to say to you this. Uh, confusion is abounds a lot right now, especially among pastors, and I'm one of them, okay? I'm just right there in it, uh, and uh, it's just not that simple. Um, and so I just ask you to continue to pray. Just pray for wisdom, pray for discernment, uh, pray for understanding. All these are great words that we that we read about in the book of Proverbs. And when I tell you what I'm about to tell you, I, I'm about as serious as I know how to be. I am all ears. I really want to hear what you believe God is speaking to you about or revealing uh, to us as a church, a society, and even individually. I would covet your counsel on that and, and bring it back in prayer uh, in, in my study and in my quiet time. And so I just, I put that out there to say, continue to pray, but don't get discouraged when you do, like I have already myself, go back to the position of victory and say, okay, Jesus, I know you've already won the victory and I know the victory is ours today and we will ultimately uh, be in victory for all eternity. Which brings me to this morning. If you did not hear the message today from Luis, you need to go back to YouTube and listen to it. He encouraged me greatly, all right? When you go and read 1 Peter chapter 1, verses 3 through 9, uh, you cannot help but be encouraged. And the entire time that Luis was preaching, I was listening to Luis and constantly reading those verses, 3 through 9, while he preached. Because the more I read it and the more I heard him speak, the more uh, I was encouraged by Brother Luis's uh, uh, message there. So you need to check that out. I believe it'll bless you uh, greatly uh, today. And I just want to say thank you to Luis for the time and the effort and energy he put into uh, encouraging us with that. Let me fast forward now to this coming Wednesday with an announcement. We are still going to meet and try to have our first business meeting since the month of March. Now, that's going to be Wednesday night, 6 p.m. Wednesday night at 6 p.m. I'll give out or we'll send out more reminders of that between now and Wednesday. There's probably not going to be a lot of business to talk about. We uh, hope that we'll at least have for you um, a financial report that will show you kind of where we are 
We may not have a full accounting uh, and report because uh, we may not have everybody here, financially speaking, from uh, leadership, but you'll at least be able to see some numbers and questions and answers can be uh, asked and given in any time, but just to present that. But really for two purposes, as we look at making some, some bylaw changes, uh, to change bylaws, you re it requires two business meetings. One, to present the proposed change, and then some time period where there's going to be talk, Q&A, uh, on, the, on the subject before we come back and vote to see if uh, the bylaws are going to be changed by the church. Two ways that we're looking to, to alter them. Number one is we're going to just add some language to, uh, I think it's uh, Article 9, Section 1, if I remember right, uh, and it's about our worship services. And so for Sunday nights, we're just going to add some language that's going to also encompass discipleship groups, small groups in the home. We're not, we're not going to be doing away with Sunday night worship corporately, uh, even though we're going to adopt a discipling uh, strategy for Sunday nights. It's going to keep us out in the community more. We will be coming back uh, consistently, periodically for worship on Sunday nights, but we just want to add that language in to allow for that to uh, be a part of uh, our future vision. And then the second thing is we are going to change, uh, look to change our business meeting from monthly to quarterly and from Wednesday nights to Sunday nights, Sunday night quarterly. And moving it away from Wednesday night will protect Wednesday night for every Wednesday night of the year for to be focused on prayer and the church gathering and prayer meetings. Uh, we'll talk more about coming back to that uh, later. Um, but also, I believe it's going to uh, elevate our um, business meetings to a much uh, higher level uh, of, of importance for the church to, to have. We'll talk more about that on Wednesday uh, night. So uh, hopefully uh, that's uh, where we are with announcements, and I think we're good with all that. But Wednesday night, 6 o'clock, you come, and uh, we'll look forward to uh, being there. Hopefully we'll be done with that business portion of the church quickly enough so that we can uh, do some more to come, uh, handouts and, and conversation uh, in the days uh, to come. But let me go to what I want to give you this evening, because I want to go ahead now and give you a snapshot of some more that is in my mind for discipleship uh, as a church and some of the goals behind that uh, and what I want us to accomplish. And so when you ask people in the church this question, how well equipped are you for ministry? What do you think the most common answer is? When the question is asked, how well equipped are you for ministry? The number one answer, by far, most people say, I am not equipped for ministry. I'm just not equipped. Now, a lot of that is going to be, uh, uh, in, in their life, some of their belief about themselves, and we're going to talk about that another time. But another part of that, uh, the responsibility really rests on the leadership of the church and the true equipping of the saints for the work of ministry, equipping disciples to be disciple makers who will make more disciple makers. Uh, that's the real question. Most people just don't think that they are equipped for that. So let me give you a quick overall goal, and then I'm going to go through a couple things with you for our discipleship. My goal for you as a church and as individuals and then as the collective body is this, for you to be able to create your personal disciple-making plan. My goal for you is for you to be able to make your personal disciple-making plan where you, as a disciple of Christ, can make disciples, reproducing yourself with an intentionality in your church life that you've never had before. Because oftentimes I believe that the only intentionality we have in our church life is whether we come to church on Sunday mornings and just then go home after a Bible study or after a worship service. So how am I going to help you create your own personal disciple-making plan? I want to give you six questions now that are going to be asked. And these six questions are, are not exhaustive, okay? They're not a complete exhaustion of the, the New Testament, but, okay, I believe they are essential to making an intentional, 
as well as a personal disciple making plan. I have looked at, listened to, read more things on discipleship in these past weeks than you can shake a stick at. I have, I, I've read so much, I've confused, I've confused myself a lot. But what I believe that as I have looked and decided on is to come back to these six questions as being the foundation of what is required for Mike Fortenberry and for you to create your own intentional and personal disciple making plan. Here are the six questions that are going to be used for every single one of us. You can write these down. I'll probably have them uh, for you in a handout form on Wednesday night. Number one, the first question is, is how will I fill my mind with truth? How will I fill my mind with the truth of God's word? Now, when I give this out to you on Wednesday night, I'm going to have extras underneath each one of these six questions, but I don't want to go too deep in this tonight and take up too much time. But in this question, really, the life of the disciple is the life of a learner, okay? If we are a disciple, we are going to continue to give our ear to the Word of God and to the teaching and the instruction of God's Word. And our aim is not just to know God, okay? When I start talking about filling our mind with truth, it is not just to know God, but our aim is to love God, to obey him. And to obey him is to love him. To love him is to obey him. And so we're going to be talking about on a constant basis as a part of your plan, how will I fill my mind with truth? The second question is this, how will I fuel my affections for God? How will I fuel my affections for God. Now, let me give you a quick synonym for the word affections, and that is worship, okay? Because discipleship sometimes, if all you do is, is go through discipleship on a technical basis, the tendency is for the disciplines that you develop to become mechanical and monotonous. And we don't want that. God does not want that. God's not looking for us to check off a box, fill in this blank, and then go do this so that by the end of the week we can check, 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 good. I got all my duties fulfilled. This is about worship. And so we're going to talk about how we're, we're going to fuel our affections for God. Intentionality, remember, in prayer and in worship and in giving and all these things that come uh, with worship. The third question is this. How will I share God's love as a witness in the world. Now, this may very well be the biggest hang-up for people that are in the church who call ourselves Christians and say we're a follower of Christ, and that is telling someone else, <clears throat> excuse me, about Jesus. How will I share God's love as a witness in the world? How can I align my life with His will for me to be His witness? and to share the love of God with a lost and dying world. That's going to be a part of our disciple-making plan. Question number four in the six is this. How will I show God's love as a member of Parkview Baptist Church? How will I show God's love as a member of Parkview Baptist Church? This is one of the great pieces of being a part of the body of Christ is that God has gifted every one of us. God has gifted every one of us. He has given us spiritual gifts. He has given us talents. He has given us resources. He has given us passions. And when you can take these four things and align them with a spiritual gift, a talent, resources that you have, and a passion together, contributing and showing God's love to and through the church is an amazing thing to see the body of Christ work the way it should. And that's going to be a part of our discipling process. Number five, how will I spread God's glory among all peoples? How will I spread God's glory among all peoples? I believe it's God's call in our life to do the very best we can to reach the uttermost parts of of the world. Now, the only way you can go to the uttermost parts of the world is to begin by going across the street, so to speak. Y'all may have heard me say before when I was in seminary, uh, Dr. Bud Frey 
He was our missiology professor, and he opened up the world to us after he himself spent 35 years in Africa. He came and finished his ministry out by uh, instructing young seminary students like ourselves. And one of the great things he said was as he just, he, he blew it up in, in the greatest possible way. He kept reminding us, you do not earn a right to go around the world if you're not going to go around your block. And so even though we're going to talk about what we're going to be doing to reach all peoples, uh, more than just giving of our offerings to go do it, uh, that's going to be a very fun thing uh, for us to be a part of. The sixth question is, is this, how will I make disciple makers among a few people? How will I make disciple makers among a few people? How do I invest Mike, if you're going to ask me to be a, a disciple who makes disciples, the, qu the next question is, is, how do I do that? How do I get to a place where I can invest in a few people like Jesus invested in his disciples? And what's the strategy for that? What does it look like? And we're going to talk about that. We're going to answer those kinds of questions. Now, those six questions are going to have more things to added to them that I'm going to have for you this coming Wednesday night as we begin to unfold both tracks of our vision for our church, and that is prayer and discipleship. Prayer and discipleship. Now, let me kind of begin to draw this to a close with this. In this current day, I began tonight's message with you with a request for prayer, just because we need wisdom, we need discernment, we need encouragement. And again, Luis's message was so timely. Uh, he said for himself, for our church, for me, uh, when I think about where we are today and what God is doing, I have no idea what God is fully doing right now, all right? But I cannot think of, and I have prayed and prayed and prayed about this, I cannot think myself of any two things that we need to give ourselves to more than prayer and making disciples that make disciples. We are in desperate need of, a, of being a praying church, and we are in desperate need of disciple making disciples okay because we are we're in a, t a tough day we're in a tough time and we're this is in the trenches kind of work and i think this is where the church is going to flourish today not so much in the big uh, uh corporate worship services that we have those are needed those are fun and those are encouraging and uplifting and spirit filled but here's where in the trench work is really going to make a difference as a church it's disciple making and in prayer. I will close with this, and then we'll pray, all right? There are going to be some questions asked this week, so I'm going to go ahead and warn you, okay? This can be fun. You can make fun of me. I'll poke fun at you right now, all right? You ready? If your phone rings this week, and if you have caller ID, and it shows the name Mike Fortenberry, you can almost rest assured that I'm going to be asking you a question this week. Here's some of the questions I'm going to be asking, all right? Are you ready? Number one, do you want to be one of the initial disciple makers in this church? You may say to me over the phone or in person, however we meet this week, you may say, well, Mike, I don't have a clue of what I'm doing. And I'll look at you and say, well, I'll help you. I want you to be one of the first. In other words, I want you to lead a group. I want you to be a disciple maker. And that means you are going to be dependent upon me to help you. And I am going to be responsible to you to help you be that disciple maker. We need some of them. I'm shooting for 10. I hope 10 will say yes to my request this week, okay? So I'm going to be asking for disciple makers. The second thing I'm going to be asking for, and listen, if you hear this right now, and you don't even have to... Uh, you don't even have to wait for my phone call because I don't know how to do this one, really, is we need host homes. We need some people who are willing to say to me, Mike, I'm not ready necessarily to be a disciple maker yet, but I'm willing to open up my home. I'm willing to let people come into my home and enter into this small group setting so that we can do that. Now, the disciple maker and the host home could be the same person, but they don't have to be. In fact, it might be better for those two to be separate so that the disciple making leader can focus on what they're going to do and you through your gift of hospitality open up your home to a small group of people within the church to do that okay so those are the first two things the third thing i'm going to be asking for 
this week is I'm going to begin to ask for people to commit to the jobs we need to fill in our prayer ministry. We need a prayer champion. We need pastors, prayer partners, and we need other things in that regard too. And I'm going to be asking for you to consider some of those things. So would you begin praying right now yourself about where you might fit in in our prayer ministry? Whether or not you might feel ready to jump out on the very front lines with me and be the initial disciple makers, all right? Or if you're willing to open up your home. Now, I know that opens up one other quick question, and we can address it more later. But here's my answer to the other question that might come up in your mind. Mike, I know you, and I, and I have brought up the date, August 27th through August the 30th, was going to be and still is planning to be our initial kickoff and beginning of a discipleship program, hopefully with a, a great four-day event of revival-type meetings and uh, disciple-type meetings. However, I'm not dumb enough. <laughs> Maybe I am. But the way things continue to go in our culture, I realize something, and that is this. It's potential we may have to back that up a little bit. I don't know. I don't know from week to week what our governors are going to say, what's going to happen from experts and those who think they're experts and, and all that comes with that. All I can say is this. This is a very fluid thing. I'm hoping that it can start in August, late August, which is coming up soon. But if we have to make a change, we'll just have to make a change. Uh, I don't want to have to do that, but that's the world we live in, right? And so I want to put that out there so that it'll keep me from being discouraged if we have to. And just for you to know, as you already do, uh, we got to see how this thing plays out day by day, week by week, and month by month. But anyway, I look forward to seeing you Wednesday night uh, at our business meeting. It'll be just like church, socially distant, okay? And it may be pretty quick. I kind of hope it is because there's not a whole lot of business to discuss so that then we can go back and talk some more about this. There you have kind of the basic framework of what we're going to use. And I'll fill in blanks more later for you on uh, how we're going to make disciples that make disciples. But I'm looking forward to that. Let me pray for you. Hope you have a great Sunday evening. And again, look for me to make a few phone calls this week, maybe make some visits, or you just call me, if you will. And uh, look forward to see what God's going to do in these days. Let's pray. Father, we thank you today for so much. that uh, Because, Lord, we have so much. We are blessed beyond measure. You are good. You are awesome, Lord. You are great beyond belief. Your grace and your mercies, they are real every day. And, Lord, what a great morning you gave us. I thank you for Jamie and his talents, his ability to step in when Luis preaches and speaks. And, Father, how we just go on without missing a beat. I thank you for gifting Luis again with, uh, with, with such a great mind and a great heart for you and for his church and for the Word of God. Thank you for the encouragement that came from him today. Lord, I pray that as we continue to move forward that you will just fill us with your wisdom. Lord, without your wisdom, we don't have a chance. Without your knowledge, without your understanding given and imparted to us, Father, we will fail, utterly fail. And so, Lord, I thank you in advance for how you're going to do that. As we search your heart, as we search your mind, Father, for answers moving forward, I know you're going to give it. And, Lord, I pray that you'll continue to bless our country. Lord, that you would give our leaders the wisdom that they need. Father, would you overwhelm them with your knowledge and understanding? Father, would their mind and heart be shifted like the Word of God says, that you could, you could change the course of their heart, just like you, 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 you charted the, the course of rivers and waters. Lord, would you do that today for our national leaders? We desperately need it. Father, would you help us as a church by keeping us safe in this COVID-19 era? Lord, so much is going on. So much is happening in people's lives. And Father, I hear stories that are devastating. And Father, we don't want that devastation. Nobody does. But Father, thank you for the presence of your hand on our ministry. Would you keep it there, Lord? Would you guard us? Would you protect us even in spite of ourselves so that we can fulfill your calling upon our lives? Lord, I look forward to the days ahead. And, and Lord, it, it, the, the challenges that we have in front of us, Lord, we, we should expect it because the enemy doesn't want advancement on our part. 
But Father, would you give us the strength and the courage necessary to move forward even when the enemy raises his head and creates fear and angst among us. Father, we know that we serve a risen Savior uh, and, that, and that in you we have victory already on our side. Uh, Lord, bless us again uh, this week as we go. We ask for you to, to guard our steps or guard our hearts and even guide them, Lord, into uh, the ways you want us to go this week for your glory and for your honor. And we love you, Lord. We love you so much. We are so grateful for forgiveness of sin and for the salvation that is ours through your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. You are so good. Thank you, God. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. God bless y'all tonight. Hope you have a wonderful evening. Look forward to talking to you this week. Bye-bye.